Oh, are we ready? Are we? Are we? Okay, call the committee to order, the Economic Development Committee, um, courtesy of the floor. Public courtesy of the floor. Okay, seeing none, we have um, discussion regarding the Upper Mount Bethel uh, Local Economic Revitalization Tax Assistance. Mr. Hartney, did you start us? Well, thank you very much. Um, there's a handout in front of everybody. There's a handout in your packet, and in a moment, I'm going to be introducing uh, Rick Fisher, who's the township manager for Upper Mount Bethel Township, and Anthony DeFranco, who is a um, councilman in Upper Mount Bethel Township, or I'm sorry, a supervisor. Uh, i got to get those <laughs> titles right. Um, but uh, we've been, the department has been working with Upper Mount Bethel Township since July in kind of helping them get organized to do this. Um, it started with a education process. Um, it's not our role to tell uh, local municipalities what incentives they should be offering, but just to educate them on how they work and you know how they can be applied. And they went through a process uh, within their township to identify the areas that uh, they thought would be needed. And this is something that uh, comes with support from uh, the county. So uh, with that, I will introduce Anthony uh, to discuss their Lerda zone. Yeah, yeah, Anthony and Rick. Good evening, and thank you for, for seeing us this, this evening. We appreciate it very much. Copy of the yeah. <laughs> oh, there's a map yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. Got it. Maybe you could lay it on that table right there behind you. <clears throat> so I, I wanted to. Um, we wanted to uh, kind of bring you into like what what our mindset is, why, why the township went in this direction, and, 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 and how committed we are to this in other ways in which we're also going forward. And I think that um, the first thing you should know, the township was, um, we, we had a study done of our, of our taxes, and we wanted to see how many properties had reductions in taxes across the township. And what we ended up with is that we, dis we discovered that almost 85% of our township had some sort of reduced tax or pay no tax at all either through ag security, farmland preservation, or you know, we have the Appalachian Trail and we have a large portion of the properties that are owned by the federal government. So we have, we have um, reduced taxes and we don't have the economic development and we have increased need for services. So we're, we're looking at ambulance services, regional police services, and we're looking at how can we do this for our citizens. We're a rural community, but we sit right across the Columbia Bridge from Interstate 80. And we have a very large industrial zone that um, was originally owned by, I guess, Med Ed, Med -Ed and then Reliant, and it's a different properties yeah, owned. In the industrial zone, they, Med Ed and Sith Properties, whatever. Sith Properties now. It's, uh, they wanted to sell the whole property, 720 acres. And it's kind of a big chunk for somebody to buy 720 acres. And they won't break it up. So I, we, we feel that this Lerda zone would help promote that sale and get things started. Because that property's been sitting there forever, it's never been developed. And it's a mile from Route 80 over the bridge, over the bridge in Portland. And so what we have is we have on, um, if, if, you look at the, if you look at the map, right where the Portland boundary ends and our zone begins on River Road. Are the, Portland, or the purple color. The purple color is actually the I zone, which is all Sith properties. And there's a smaller zone, an, an industrial zone, an I-1 zone along um, Route um, 611. And we used to have a Pocono Foods uh, facility there. The facility's there. It's empty. I think they're, uh, right now they're doing some warehousing in it. And there's another property that, used to, that was actually built with grant money for Formica. They left. It's now been sold and it's being leased to Air Liquide. And Air Liquide is in our industrial park, which as I was, I was mentioning, there's actually a road along the boundary of the zone and um, between Portland. The road actually 
is partly in Portland and partly Mount Bethel. The industrial zone has six lots in it. And uh, Ultra Poly is in Portland Borough. Air Liquide is in Upper Mount Bethel Township. And, um, and now, they're, now they're expanding onto Route 611. Um, and they want to do further expansion in the future. Um, not necessarily in the big zone, but possibly at this um, plant on 611. Our, our Board of Supervisors looked at this and they looked at, um, at the same time, uh, they looked at the stretch of roadway that extends from Portland Borough uh, to the end of the zone, which is a PennDOT highway, but it's, it's township highway after that. And the township, to show their level of commitment, entered into agreement with PennDOT to take the road back. And, in, and that, that includes um, actually rebuilding two bridges. So that's, a, that's almost a $900,000 project that, that we've taken back of that road. We're also doing an Act 537 plan update, a complete update of Act 537 plan for our sewage. Portland, gener Portland's plant actually sits in the industrial park and is underutilized. It's, um, it doesn't, it's not anywhere near capacity. It probably has about 75,000 gallons per day of capacity available now. And it was designed to be added to by components from our Bethel Township in the future. So we have a plant. We have a straight shot down 611, or I'm sorry, down River Road. We're taking that road back. It's on the opposite side of six of uh, River Road is where the Portland Generating Station is, which is no longer in, in use. And that's also apparently up for sale. And there's rail. So we also have a rail spur that can go into this industrial park. So the board looked at that and said, let's take the road back. Let's do Act 537 plan update to, to look at that and also at our 611 corridor to, to look at sewering that. And, um, and then we looked at what can we do about this property. And that's where we started looking at TIFs and LERDAs. And, and we, we brought in some consultants um, to help us with that. And, um, and they recommended the LERDA. And that's, Anthony can go from there, but that's where we stand today. Yeah, I mean, basic idea is to bring in jobs and uh, obviously more income. Uh, we have a three and a half million, three point two million dollar budget. Uh, even if we, for now, if they brought jobs in, we can raise that substantially. Plus, then in the future for taxes. Uh, like Rick said, we have eighty, almost eighty-five percent of our property is non-taxed or low tax, discounted tax. So that means fifteen percent of the people are really bearing. I would, uh, we never did the exact figure, but probably over 60% of the taxes, or 15% of the people. So it's kind of out of balance. So we want to try to get this back into balance. But it's a long view because this Correct. program gives tax relief <coughs> at 0% the first year and 10% in 20 and 30 over a 10 year period. So we're looking at the long view. And, and the township is solvent financially. It's even though our taxes are low, we're solvent financially. We have reserves. We're in good. We're in good financial condition. So you know that's the board looked at that and said we can afford to do the Act 537 plan. We can afford to take the road back. And if we go over PennDOT's allocation, we have to pay for that. And we have the reserves to do that. If we're under it, that'll go back into our liquid funds, and we can do improvements. So, you know, we're we 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 looked at this as a comprehensive way of going forward. And the LERDA is essential to that, in order to get economic development, mainly because it's such a large piece. Right. It's, it is the largest industrial, zoned industrial area in the Slate Belt. I think all the, the other areas in the Slate Belt, I believe, uh, I was told that this is bigger than all of them put together. So we do have, we have the property, we have the proximity to, to the, the populations of northern Jersey, New York, and everywhere else. Uh, Mount Bethel is within a four-hour ride of 53 million people, so we have the capacity we have a great location to draw in businesses. Um, one of the other things we do have along this property is we do have water available from Portland Water Authority. And there is a gas line that runs down through here. So we do have all three within a reasonable distance from this property. And I think if, you know, if we can uh, offer the learning program, I think we can move this property and start you know, bringing some and its impact on our community will not be as much as you would expect to have the industrial development right. because the Columbia Bridge to Interstate 80 is five minutes away mm -hmm. and it's River Road right onto the ramp right across right. the bridge. If you come across the bridge from New Jersey, you get, go around the Cloverleaf, make a right hand turn and you're on River Road, you go a quarter of a mile, you turn right up into the desert. So there, there will be no traffic impact going through town. I commend your leadership um, for your township and uh, 
I, my, uh, does it include the the Portland um, where the power plant sits now? Is that part of this? I'm it just is, I'm struggling with the map. A, yes, it's in, it's part of the, the learning program. Okay. Yes, it is okay. within the learning. Do they do they still run the CT there? That combustion turbine, the small one. Do they still keep on that? Emergency basis. Mar emergency. Yeah. Okay. It, is this the first Lerda this town has had? They had a Lerda about 20 years ago, and it was it, it was a single page ordinance, and it was township wide. It, it didn't dif differentiate between any zones, and it was it was never used. Questions? Yep. Uh, so, are you guys looking at warehouses up there, or? or, or because I guess you know one concern is obviously with your your you know closeness to, to 80 there, it'd be ideal for a warehouse. And I think if you look at other areas that put in the warehouses, you know they have some buyer's remorse we have of like 300,000 square foot maximum. So okay. Warehouses, most of those warehouses are looking at a million square feet. Yeah. So I think it'd be good because plus, plus it is it's a, it's a sloped a terrace property. Sure. It's really not conducive to large buildings. No. It'd be yeah. good for there manufacturing. Is, there's a niche, from what we understand, reading the papers and doing some research, there is a niche for 80,000 square feet manufacturing plants and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I personally, I, I, I also applaud it, and I think something like that is, you know, it would be good for the area. One of the, the first jobs I had at a high school was at a clothing mill right there in, in Penargel and, and oh, yeah. yeah what, what yeah <laughs> and, you know, and what that does for the community you know there was you know 30 some people that worked there that probably all lived within two two or three months yeah you know and so it, it paid very well especially you know for for me right I had a high school without any degree or anything like that but you know you could fill your gas tank it would last you know a couple of weeks you, you know we started early so when you were home to get your kids off the bus and help them with the homework so I yeah, I grew up in Rosetta we had about eight mills that were Yep. Three or four blocks, you know, walk, well, a half a mile walk. Yeah. So. I, I stitched my fingers a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Other than the one you mentioned, one of the companies that's up there now actually wants to. They're looking to. They're in the tube to yeah, expand. So Airliquid is looking possibly to expand their business. Do you have anybody else in the tube for any of this yet, or None of this. the early stages? Huh? No, it's just you know, people are knocking on the doors because they heard about the Lerda program already. So people are checking, but we don't have nothing to do with the property. It's, it's all through Medhead or Sith, Sith property. Yeah, we, we think there's some activity on the Sith property only because we have we have an engineering firm doing an environmental assessment right, right now, and that's usually a sign of uh, some sort of activity that's going on between a, a seller and a buyer. So, but they also went through bankruptcy, you know, with um, Genon mm -hmm. in order to separate um, the two companies. Uh, so it's, uh, it's so a lot of these properties were a part of that bankruptcy there process. There is a gas line there feeding that CT there. Yes. I know yeah. that, but it's not that big, I don't think. It's not real yeah. big. Yeah. Yeah. But there is, like you said, there was people, you get some phone calls, hey, what's going on with the property? And, but that's never happened before. So something's happening. Air Liquid is also looking to, to relocate their corporate headquarters, and we're, we're hoping that perhaps this might be an, um, an incentive for them. Because you know it's just as easy to, to move it somewhere else, you know, uh, where where uh, they have other incentives. So we're trying to also we're looking at that. And we want we want them to stay. We want them to be a, a partner. They're really good to our community. I can tell you that they they make donations uh, for our July Fourth. They donate to our summer rec program. Um, they they really do give back to the community, and we'd like them to stay. Does anybody have any? Yeah, Correct. this this map is like the purple part is is the plant that's 700 acres you're trying to do. Correct. Uh, what's the orange going down the road? That's 611, I take it. That's Village Center. And, uh, that's really Center Commercial. Village that's Center. not in the Lerda. That's not. So what is exactly is the Lerda? Just the purple part? The Lerda. The Lerda is so the hatched part. The Lerda part includes this area here. You should get a laser right. pointer. To just the purple stuff. Yeah. yeah. Just go right back there and laser point. So this little gray, this little black area in, in the bottom, down at 611, how, how big is that? That's part of the Lerda? The little, the little blue area? Purple area. Yeah. Well, it's gray, purple, whatever you the little, have. The little gray area has, has um, about five properties, maybe six. Um, one is the Pocono Foods property. One is the Formica um, so there's two. There's another property that um, there were gentlemen who were going to put a small manufacturing facility on it. They have not done that. It's been about 10 years. They do right. it well. 
they, they I'm not sure about the acreage. Right. I don't know what the acreage is. Eight, and are all these? Yeah. I'm, There may be there may be 15 acres on the other, maybe 15, 20. Acres. My other question is, do you plan on improving 611 and widening and making it bigger for all the traffic that'll come if your alert is successful and you have, uh, you know, I mean, I know you just turn north and make a right, but you know, I've driven to that power plant a lot of times and it seems to take forever to get there from down this way. Yeah, most of that traffic. We're, we're, Most of that traffic would come across the bridge for us. And around so when it comes across the bridge and turns into the roundabout, those aren't those two-lane roads? What we are yes. doing is we're doing a traffic study right now. Um, we, we just Our engineer is going to do a traffic study on the intersection of 512 and 611 right. for traffic light and also Delaware Avenue, which is further down uh, where TK's restaurant is. He's doing a traffic study there for a So light. my question is, with that traffic study, are you planning on improving the roads and widening and making it so you can have it, you know, if you're having light industrial, you're going to have tractor trailers, you're going to have, you know, there's bigger, I mean, they're tiny roads. You're making left turns on tractor it's, trailers. It's a state and all. highway, so it wouldn't be our decision to widen that road. It's, it was six loads of state highway. We, we so PennDOT. How do we get 412 widened? That's a state highway too, isn't it? But I mean, because of the industrial development that was going on around there, has any of that been? What we're going to be doing in the, in, in the lower end in Stone Church is we're going to be putting up uh, speed signs, and which what we've also we bought the the more elaborate kind, so we can actually do traffic studies from from the signs. So we're going to be we're going to okay. be studying the traffic because our traffic has increased on 611 since the Tatami accident has opened. <laughs> so yeah, and, I, I, and they I, also I, they raised the, the height on the bridge, the railroad bridge. I'm, I'm supportive. Portland. I'm supportive of this. I'm just asking certain questions that I have, but I, I'm, I am supportive of it, and you know, well for. With regard to if, if, if on a state highway, um, when you do development, you need a highway occupancy permit, and so the state will force you to do like a traffic study, right. and then based on the use, they'll say you need to widen it to X number of lanes. So like with the case of 412. Yeah, I'm really familiar with 412 and how that came. I was just asking if these guys were in that trying to get such, get ahead of the curve instead of waiting for PennDOT to get there, because you know well, we're, PennDOT will make us get. It took us forever to get that. We are all also working with Mary, uh, Senator Scavello, who is actually putting a satellite office in our building, uh, starting Monday. Monday. Right? Yeah. They move in Monday. Monday they move in. So he'll be in our. Well, our hopefully he can be. Our, hopefully he can be effective and actually get money up there. That's what we're hoping. To do something. For. Okay, and eventually, we'd like to see improvements along that road. That's why we're doing the study from the traffic lights. <coughs> on the blind spot. We already did. No, it's not. It's the river road. road. river road. So what 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 accident Well, then they don't have to deal with. They don't have to deal with Pennon. So they only deal with you. Right. So would that be part of the road expansion that you're trying to achieve? If down along down the river road, it could be yes. Yes, there could be. But there could be a center turning lane on river road before this is through. We could we could be expanding that road to to address uh, the needs of that part. Because as you all know, PennDOT could drag stuff out. <laughs> but we've decades, already, uh, right? We've yeah. taken it back. We have two years to make the improvements, or PennDOT takes the money back that they've allocated to us. So we have two years to to to, re to completely rebuild two bridges, and uh, do the improvements necessary. Guide PennDOT roads. actually paid us to take the road back. Yeah. Okay. And we actually have more roads taken back than any other township in in Commonwealth Pennsylvania. But we're at 28 miles of roads mm -hmm. that we've taken back. So your timeline is two years on the roads and the bridges? Two years on the roads. Just to improve the roads. Just to improve the roads. And within that time period, the LERTA would do? We'll start. We'll start. Hopefully, as long as you guys are <laughs> OK, thanks. But yes, we took that back just to make it easier for anybody that wants to come in. They can do one group. Still have to build it to depend on specs, but they're going through us and not to depend on much quicker. Much faster. Add a railroad spur in there and it'd be a three year. Yeah, there is a possibility of a railroad spur. Yeah, we have the railroads right there. And if Meadow property does get sold, there's plenty of space there to do a transfer station. Mrs. Hafner. Thank you. Do you have a question? I'm in the blind spot over here. I see that. <laughs> I wanted you to repeat the amount of acres in the Meadow property because I didn't hear that correctly. 750, 750 acres. 750. Yeah, the entire zone is 752 acres. 
and they're looking to sell it. They don't have a buyer at this point, or you're not, not the sure. Word. We all hear rumors. <laughs> and then, are you, but they want to sell it as one chunk. They, they want to sell it as one chunk. They, they have a number of buyers over the years that would want the remedial. They want the whole. The, they were going they to sell on the south side of River Road was the property that they're going to sell. The plant property was not for sale, but we've been told now that they would consider that as well. So we decided to add it to the Lurda, um, to the Lurda zone in case they would actually sell that. And my other question is, are you, or, or is anyone courting anybody to come in? I mean, like you said, is there anybody ready to go, but are you approaching anybody? Do you have any plans for who to approach? We don't have, it. we're not approaching anybody in particular who's out there that's going to be available when that property is sold. We don't own the property, so we can't say until that property is sold. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Um, yeah, I'm generally supportive of this. I guess I had a couple questions. Wasn't there a housing development proposed for this several years back? Was this Marshfield, Marshfield. or something like that? This was the Marshfield property. Okay. And, and there's a probably about on the on the, the property that's south of um, Server Road. There's probably about 200 acres that we would think wouldn't be developed at all um, because of wetlands and steep slopes. Okay. So, you know, what's workable versus what the total is, maybe 500 acres that's, that's doable What's not for development. Industrial, there won't be any so there is no residential There's component no residential at all. Component okay, at so all. That, that's... that. It's not zoned for that. Okay, so. and that plan has been withdrawn? Um, A long time from, ago, yes. Okay. Um, I guess um, then this property has been discussed on and off for years. I guess the question I have is why is there so much difficulty finding... A, you know, industrial development for that site, given, you know, the abundances of warehouses that we've seen come in, you know, across the valley over the last 10 years. I think the, one of the main reasons is because they won't sell it in pieces so that someone could, uh, we had, for instance, we had a realtor from New Jersey come in, they were looking for 30, 40 mm -hmm. acres for, for a manufacturing facility. They don't want 750 or 500, they, they want 30 or 40, so this doesn't work for them. And unless, unless we can join them with other persons that, and other companies that, that want to do that and, and bring them together, you know, and to do this, it, this is our problem. And mm. Sith won't sell it except as one chunk, so it, it makes it impossible to develop it in, in, in pieces or even in phases. So you do need like a majestic or a substantial developer to purchase the whole property and then possibly subdivide it with, with after vision, that. With a vision to... To develop it, you know, and uh, we need somebody like a, like a rock star who's you know, handsome and Jay Z, but he can't fix that. The big people can do that. Okay, so uh, have there been active discussions? You don't have to give me a specific person. Uh, have there been active discussions with a Rockefeller or Majestic or an LVIP? Not or that we know of because we're not, we don't own the property. Okay. So that's a no, problem. The, the attorney. <laughs> The attorney that's working with us, John Luscious, on this, um, he, you know, he has brought to us and said there are he has clients that might be interested in possibly 200 acres of it. So it's it's one of those where if if we can through our consultants, if we can pull together these these people that want 30 and 40 and want 200, maybe we can maybe we can come come up with something, you know, and we can maybe bring them together, and that's that's what we'd like to see happen. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? I'd like to see you guys, you guys are at least getting the groundwork done and starting yeah, like, it. you got to start it. We have our Act 537 going forward. We're working with Portland with their water and sewer. Meeting with them Monday. Uh, and we do, they have, they have the water capacity and the sewer capacity. And it's just, I mean, they're built out. They're, they're you know, they have so much room in Portland. And to add to we, your answer, we actually. We have all the room so we can work together. To add on to the, to, to the answer to that to you is that prior years there was no plant there until they built that plant for the industrial park, okay. so we had no infrastructure at all, and we had nothing, and um, we had possibly water, but that was it. Did you say the maximum building size is three hundred? Three hundred thousand square foot. That's the max that's the that they can build the they in can this build area. In okay. Our, in our in our industrial zones, right. yeah. And I think that have, that might have something to do with people. Snooping around a little bit because we had raised it was only forty thousand about four years three years ago. Yeah, and we 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 up to three hundred thousand.
Thank you very much. Thank you. So the action that we are looking for from this committee is uh, the first reading of the ordinance tonight. The Lerda ordinance should be in your packets. Um, and so we would be looking for a favorable recommendation from this committee on the ordinance. Okay. We need a motion for that? No. Committee? Okay. Motion? Ron? Yep. Second? Ten? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved Thank for the reading. Thank yeah. Good job, guys. Okay. Um, Next up, we have the um, pre presentation regarding the Delaware Canal 21. Oh, look at that. Ms. Smith? Yes. Good evening. Good evening. We, our office had a meeting um, with Doug Wait Dolan, who is the executive director <clears throat> of the Delaware Canal 21 project. Can you hold on, Tina? Mm -hmm. Just a second, please. Sure. I'm not sure, absolutely. I'll, I will second. I, 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 I don't need a second. Okay, all right. Okay, we're going to return back to this for a second. Please bear with us. Um, <laughs> the, we need a motion. We need a motion um, to move the reading of the uh, of the ordinance for um, the Alerta for Upper Mount Bethel. Uh, Mr. I, Kraft, I'm a second motion. It. Second, Ms. Sarinsky. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. So moved. Thank you, Thank Thank you. Mr. Spadoni. Ms. Smith. We're getting there. Okay. Um, so our department had a meeting um, with Doug Dolan and his team, who is the executive director of the Delaware Canal 21 project. Um, it's a very preliminary right now. Uh, State Representative Freeman is also supportive of it and was in attendance at our meeting. Um, we're exploring right now the opportunity for uh, Northampton County to basically sit at the table um, with the other county involved and see if we want to uh, further any more discussion in full support of this project. So I'm going to introduce Doug, who's the executive director, and he'll give you more information. Thank you. Do we have a packet on this too? No. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for sharing your time out of your meeting schedule here to um, to listen to um, to an idea. And okay. Um, I am the executive director of Delaware Canal 21. Delaware Canal 21 is a nonprofit organization, uh, private nonprofit that's very recently formed. Uh, two other members of the of the organization are here, and we're going to do a little bit of uh, of a tag team, if you don't mind, uh, and a presentation here. Delaware Canal 21 uh, as was founded by a, a group of people um, who, looking at the the history of the canal, who, um, which you know running from Easton to Bristol, is, is a great treasure for both Northampton and Bucks counties. Um, it's a treasure on a variety of levels, historical, natural, environmental, economic. I mean, you can go through the whole story, and I know that's something you've, you've talked about in other meetings and other perspectives. Um, I think the thing that, that we want to look at here is a continuing challenge that we have of keeping the canal maintained. Mm -hmm. um, those of you who, who enjoy it and use it know the trials and tribulations of taking care of the canal and trying to maintain it, not just for today, but for generations to come, for tomorrow's tomorrow. In looking at it, there's a variety of organizations that have worked on the canal. One of the things that we've just looked at here is to try to think about ways to look at the canal, um, perhaps with a clean sheet of paper, 
to think about the issues and to think about fundamentally what needs to be done. And I think one of the things which um, is at the very root of the, of the canal is water. Um, if you don't have water in a canal, you have a ditch. <laughs> and I don't think you need to have a historical or ecological degree in anything to know when you're walking by it. The, the absence of a functioning canal really lessens the experience, whether you're going there to study it historically or whether you're going there to just take an afternoon walk in the sunshine. It's water, it's fundamental. And with that, containment, adding it, the structure, it begins a whole host of, of issues. And how do you put water in the canal and how do you maintain it? We've, we've got some ideas and we've, we've shared these in Bucks County and we've shared them in Northampton County here. Part of what we're doing here this evening is to just share this idea another step further here in Northampton. We think it's a, an issue that both counties have vested interests in it. Um, what I'd like to do is turn over right now to Bill Collins, who is a technical advisor with the uh, uh, Delaware Canal 21, to sort of walk through. We did a brief PowerPoint presentation here, so we'll walk through that. There'll be lots of questions. When we get to the end here, bear in mind that this is the beginning of a journey, not the end of a journey. Many of the questions that you have, we have, the process that we want to embark on is getting the answers for those questions and the questions that still haven't been asked because that's really where we're going to work to hopefully work together and come to. So um, if I may, I'd like to introduce Bill Collins here. Bill. Thank you, Doug. Good evening, everyone. Okay. <clears throat> With us uh, tonight is David Heckler, um, and you probably know him from Bucks County, and he's going to speak after I do. Um, and I just want to make sure I know how to just push the arrow buttons, right? Yeah. Okay. So um, <clears throat> this is coming, this is, this idea is a result of, of a vision study that was funded by the William Penn Foundation. Um, and it took about a year and a half to do, <coughs> and it was conducted by DC21 and with DCNR. The DCNR is the steward and the manager of the, of the canal. Um, it was wide open, everything went on the table, um, and the number one issue as a result of that vision study was water in the canal. There's access issues for the trail, the DNL trail, and the DNL was a big part, partner in that. Um, but the water was universal, and it went from Bristol all the way up to Easton, and uh, there's multiple issues why the DCNR has trouble keeping water in the canal. Um, but uh, the idea that it doesn't have a big enough budget within the state park, the, the entire state park budget, and can't carve out any more of that state park budget to this one park. So this park is unique in all the state parks in that it's expected to run an active waterway as part of its services, which is completely different than any other state park. Um, not only are, are the, uh, is the crew not trained for it when they, when they arrive, but they have to train up on the job and that, inf that information gets passed down. And it's been um, organic, let's say. It hasn't been run as a modern facil waterway facility because they just haven't had the resources to do it. And that's not really going to change. We all know what the budget looks like. So um, one of the ideas that came out of the vision study was well, maybe we could have an overlay that would be an authority that might be able to be created between the two counties with which the canal tra transverses, um, and that could supplement in, in different ways uh, the budgets and the, and the resources of DCNR. And the, the best example of that that came out of the vision study was the New Jersey Canal, which runs through Lambertville, runs down to Trenton, gets pumped over into the Raritan and runs the Raritan over to New Brunswick where people pay for to drink water. It's 100 million gallons a day. We're not saying that that's going to be the, the, um, the answer to this canal, but that's one idea. Um, and really, 
um, when DC-21 <laughs> went out to speak to Secretary, um, Secretary Dunn about this, um, we were basically there to talk to her about how William Penn might bring money to the, to the canal study, and she brought up the idea. So maybe she read the vision study, or maybe it just occurred to her that she knew what New Jersey was doing, but she said, what about if we have an authority as a partner? So from there, the encouragement to DC-21 was go investigate this. So the meetings have been held with Bucks County, meetings have been held with Northampton County, with the uh, city of Easton, and now, and now um, Tina Smith's department. And so she asked us to be here. Um, Watering of the canal is, is the issue, and uh, the perennial constraints of the budget are, are the, the uh, impediment to, to improving. The United Alternative Forward that, that people see as a viable way to bring in more money is the idea of an authority, but that needs to be studied. Um, and so uh, our, our consultants, one of them is Paul Levy, in the Center City District in Philadelphia. The way they turned the Center City around was a special s services district that gets its own funding from the, uh, from the members. And so he said, if, you, if you're interested in doing this, you really need to assemble a legal team and you need to approach it in a two-phase. Uh, two phase. First phase would be, step one would be for, for the two counties to work together not, one, not a single county because this spans two counties. Um, so the idea would be to create a, an authority with limited powers that would do a feasibility study only. That's its only, that's its only charge. Uh, if the feasibility sh study should come back with recommendations for feasibility, then the counties would sit down again and negotiate if, if and how they would go to step two. And step two is granting greater authority to, to, the, um, to that corporation and then it would, it would go into the business according to what was feasible as a way to raise money. Some of the things, and this is, this is only come out of the public process, is stormwater management, uh, special services district, um, different types of concessions that might be run that would be compatible with the historic and the recreation aspects of the canal. <clears throat> um, there are models across the country. This, is, this just lists four, and one of them is the New Jersey uh, Authority. And um, what we want to, what I want to close my technical part, and then I'll be happy to try and answer your questions, is um, how do we keep water in the canal if it's important for recreation, if it's important for uh, tourism and those aspects of economic development? But more important, uh, maybe it might be important to firefighting. It used to be. It used to be that all the, the local companies would be able to count on that water, and they can't now. Um, we know that maybe 20 miles of the 60 miles runs right next to the river road. When you travel down, you can see it's the mountainside river road, the canal, and the mm -hmm. river. Um, right now, all the stormwater off that state highway runs into the state park, and the state park is charged with taking care of it. So are there ways that, that a number of agencies might be able to work together in the state to also provide more money rather than just that narrow state budget? These are things that have to be studied, and we need a way to do it. Um, when you look at the canal mechanically, there's two major places where water enters that canal. One is in Easton, and one is in, in New Hope. And they both have wing dams, or this one's a full dam, but New Hope has a wing dam. And what those dams do is they were built when the canal was built in 1832, and they raised the pool of water so that the water can flow off into the canal at those locations. Without that Easton dam, there's a lot of things that are missing in Easton, and there's there's water missing from Easton down in the canal. That is the major source of water in the canal. So um, that dam was built as part of the canal, and through the vision study, we found out that it's DCNR that owns it. So I know that the, 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 um, the pool behind that dam, and the dam itself is an icon for Easton, and I know that there's sculling, and there's fishing, and there's all kinds of 
activities that people use now and are counting on in the future for um, ecotourism. But without that dam and without a strategic plan to address a catastrophic failure or a fatigue failure in that dam, not only does the canal go dry, but the Lehigh River goes down to a, to a, a stream bed. And so right now, DCNR has been doing testing on that dam, and they say it's, it's sound, that's fine. But there is no plan, and they, they are not prepared to have a plan that's contingent upon something happening to that dam. Now, during the vision study, the Army Corps was engaged. They're involved in all things river. Um, and when they found out that this came up as an idea in the vision study, they contacted DC-21 and said, can we be part of that? DC-21 contacted Secretary Dunn and said yes. And so officially that dam is on the, the Army Corps' radar stream, screen. By having an authority that can start to negotiate these things, th we can start to look at how can we bring in other partners, including the federal partners where they're not being engaged now, or they need to be engaged so that we're prepared. So that's, that's really gives you a, an overview of the importance of the canal and parts of the canal maybe you didn't know were, were associated with the canal and the ownership of there. Um, and I'd like to, um, to just go to the next steps and then um, turn it over to David Heckler. Um, there was a, there was an urgency from DCNR to, to get this started. Um, and so the meet, we've been having the meetings and everyone we've met with said, good idea, let's take it to the next step, see, see where it goes. Um, the next step, as we see it after this meeting, would be for the leaders of the two counties to get together and talk about it and see what it would take. It's gonna take some legal work um, and then if they agree on a framework, then uh, to draft a charter with that limited powers. That would be the next step. Um, and then to, um, to populate the, the commission, all these things would need to be negotiated. Who's on it? How's the rep representation work? You know, 12 miles is in Northampton, 48 miles is in Bucks. How do, you, how do you do this equitably? Those are things that have to be answered. But the idea is, set the meeting up with the county commissioners uh, if they're both um, and Bucks is, is looking forward to the meeting um, and then start that process with the county lawyers and uh, DC 21 would be bringing some knowledgeable attorney to the table um, for the uh, <clears throat> for the authority aspect and so the idea would be um, over the summer to hammer that out and then hopefully uh, if, it's, if it's determined to go forward, then by September, um, start the work. I, I just have one thing to say. You, you keep for? calling it DC-21. I worked for DC-21 in Philadelphia for the last, like, 20 years. DC and R. DC-21. You District for Council D 21, Painters Union, for the Glazers and the Painters. And every time you say DC-20, I'm reading, it's like DC-21, we're involved in something like this. Uh, you just keep, you know, I mean. Okay, that's an acronym I, I didn't know. But DC-21 I mean, stands Bill's for... Bill's getting confused. We're like, wow. <laughs> Del <laughs> Delaware you <know>. Canal 21. <laughs> DC-21. Yeah, I just want to, you know... I, I want to thank you very much. I, wanna, I, have, I have to say here, I didn't plant this question here because I've been saying to the organization, there's lots of DC-21s doing yeah. lots of things here. And, <laughs> and we need to talk in terms of Delaware Canal 21, which is the 21st century, as right. opposed to the DC-21s uh, both locally and right. beyond. Yeah, because I mean, we're in Philadelphia. Every DC twenty one is a whole Eastern PA, and you know, it's you, every time you see it, Eastern PA, Southern New Jersey, and the state of Delaware. And every time you say it, I'm like, oh wow, we're busy. So, so is that a, is that a good thing? It's a good thing that you're. Yeah, I don't know. It's a con. I don't know. Is it a conflict of names? I don't know. I just Delaware Canal twenty one. So. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Collins. Thanks, Bill. Uh, I, Bill's throwing my name around like it means anything up here. I, uh, uh, I think I got drafted by the, the folks who founded the D.C. Delaware Canal 21, uh, for whom I have enormous respect. And, I, I, and I'm going to back off to about the 20, 
20,000 foot view here and try and be brief, but um, I think they, they wanted me to be involved in this because I, I won't say hornswoggled, I persuaded our county commissioners in Bucks County to build a courthouse uh, where, wearing another hat and uh, uh, I think that, uh, and uh, wearing another hat earlier in, in my life, I helped organize the Legislative Canal Caucus. So I've been bumping around the Delaware Canal one way or another and watching its travails and seeing the managers come and go with DCNR, all wonderful people, none of whom ever expected to be managing a canal uh, or ditch, depending on what part of it you're looking at. <laughs> and, uh, and nor were they given the resources. And so it, it, backing up to, to like 20,000 feet, to me, when, when this, was, this proposal was explained to me, it, it was just genius. Because as you look at history and then you look into the future, that canal's a fragile structure. Uh, I mean, it's a lot of dirt and a lot of stone, and you think it's going to be there forever. And then the folks up in New York don't manage the reservoirs pro properly, and all of a sudden, holy Anna, you know, a ton of water comes down the, the, the river and wipes out uh, things you wouldn't have imagined could be wiped out. Plus, mo th that canal carries water over streams. There are vulnerable spots that, are, that were built, you know, the, there are not too many bridges that we have still working that were built in the 19th century with, with bricks or uh, stones and mortar, that's what's carrying water in a number of places. And so gradually that's, that gets pecked at, but the we eat up an enormous part of the total uh, capital budget for state parks and query whether that can ever keep on. So as I, from 20,000 feet, one of a couple of things is gonna happen. One is what some of the people who preceded me in elected office down in Bucks County in the 50s was, oh, we're going to fill that in, make it a roadway, you know, heck with the canal. Um, I think most of us believe that that would be a terrible thing, even if you don't care about the ditch. We've discovered with both the trail right-of-ways and that wonderful towpath, uh, recreation you know, we've come to understand how to use those, that, a, a nice flat stretch. And the problem with that towpath, it's a, they've, the, actually DCNR's done a wonderful job in my period of time getting it leveled out, getting it so you can ride a trail bike on it and do very well. It's only maintained if that ditch beside it stays watered, doesn't erode, doesn't, doesn't, isn't allowed to deteriorate. So when, when everybody's saying we got to have water, that really water protects that, that structure. And if it's not there, you, you've got to re, you do have to pour concrete in the, in the whole thing. It's, it just isn't viable. So one of the things that could happen is the whole thing goes away, gradually falls into disrepair. Maybe you pump a little water into a certain part of it, so it's picturesque going through New Hope or something. You have water up here in Easton because the, the Lehigh River hopefully isn't going to go dry, but it's not a viable structure. Or we can count on the state to make some massive infusion of money. Uh, not going to happen. Not, not in this lifetime, I don't think. Um, you can have the county step up and say that their taxpayers will take it over. I don't see that happening either. Uh, there may be, have to be a way in which there are some local responsibility, uh, but I just don't see county commissioners being in a position to say, given that only a small part of, uh, even though we've got longer canal, we're just along the river. There are a whole bunch of folks in Bucks County who live back towards Montgomery County, who are going to say, what, you're going to spend how much money? Maybe, maybe not. You know, farmland preservation has been enormously popular, I think, in both counties. Maybe you can sell that, but I think it's very tough. The genius thing that the folks at Delaware Canal 21 have done and now hope to carry forward into reality is to create an entity that tries to make the canal as maybe totally self-supporting, certainly makes it pay for itself to the greatest extent possible.
by and, and, and DCNR just doesn't do. They're not equipped to do that. They're, this is simply a responsibility that they try and spend their own money to maintain. The ideas that, that have already been developed and advanced uh, need to be pursued by, you know, the kind of people you'd want building a business. Good lawyers, number one, to structure the, the, the entity, and then uh, smart people who can figure out utility right-of-ways. Uh, is this, uh, are we located in a, in a place that maybe we can get cable providers, who knows, to, to help uh, pay for some of this? I don't have that sharp pencil, but uh, the Canal 21 has come up with some wonderful experts. I kind of look forward to seeing the solicitors from the two counties get together with Joe Bright, who's, uh, heck, I can remember him lobbying me in Harrisburg like 25 years ago. He is an extraordinarily respected lawyer in this area. The Canal 21 can make him available to the solicitors from the two counties and together, hopefully, they get together and develop the best possible structure. So, so what we're trying to do is sort of value add to the process of creating something that nobody thought about before to, to take responsibility, to really build expertise. If we get to the point of having funding, f finding the funding, develop real expertise on operating this thing. Uh, you know, how do you replace the, it, it, well, I won't, I won't go on, be happy to answer questions, but this prospect of creating an entity whose only responsibility is to look at that canal, figure out how to make it viable economically, and then spend that money as intelligently as possible to actually make this thing so that three generations from now there's still a canal that looks more or less like this one looks and is stable and hopefully uh, uh, reasonably flood proof but repaired and maintained when the bad things happen. Mr. He Mr. Heffler, is that correct? Heckler. Heckler. And uh, you're a commissioner from Bucks County, correct? No, no. I, I was. I, I was going to say, if you just uh, tell your title. Oh, sure. I have no title. I'm retired. <laughs> okay. I'm, uh, I am ex officio with uh, okay. Canal 21. Okay. Uh, All right. Um, uh, I was a member of the that union you might, once, okay. but not, uh, not the. Actually, I probably painted more houses than. Uh, uh, a lot of people, but that was in an earlier stage of my life because my football coach had it but, in with Delaware Valley College. I used to, I was a state representative, colleague of Bob Freeman's, then uh, went on to the state senate. I was then elected uh, judge and ended up being president judge in, in Buc down in Bucks County when it c became necessary to build uh, a new, well, expand our facilities. You folks were able to add on to uh, this structure very uh, very well uh, we we kind of had to build a whole new structure which was took some cajoling but uh, the commissioners I think uh, felt that they had made a wise decision when they when we got it done and we did it very ef efficiently and then it's my building, by the way. Down, big part your building dwells town yeah. beautiful yes I it's a model of the Thanks, thanks. <laughs> Courtrooms are a little small, but that, that, that happened after I went away. My, my last act uh, in life, which was by far the most fun, I, I kind of wish I hadn't uh, paved the way for the, the, my successor, but I gave up a perfectly good judgeship to run for DA, and I was DA down there for the last, well, uh, this fall it'll be two years since I resigned, and now Matt Weintraub, uh, who I brought back from the shore to, uh, to go on because I was, thought he was a good candidate for that job. But, uh, so I've done a bunch of things, uh, but as I say, I don't think my fame comes up here much. But, uh, so, but so you're a resident from Bucks County. I am and you're absolutely involved lifelong. Okay. Did, did, uh, did your group, um, I don't know if you're ready for questions or not, sure. but did your, group, um, did your group present at Bucks County yet? Yeah. Oh, they did? Not, it, 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 Again, we're you can you can say we're we're more traditional or primitive or whatever. Bucks is just the three uh, commissioners. Right, commissioners. System. Sure. We've met with each of the commissioners. They're on board. I, again, I don't speak for another public official. They certainly have encouraged us that the, the, and and have assigned the planning commission. I think there've already been some meetings so, with the Bucks County Planning Commission. So can you review the commitment that you're looking from Northampton County? 
The, or the, just one of the, why do you just want to just review the commitment that well, you're looking for? Uh, the, the commitment would really only be to uh, assign, to authorize, I suppose, your solicitor to meet with the solicitor from Bucks County uh, to see if they can develop the, the framework for an authority who's, who's a, a by county authority, whose only, I hate to use the authority of an authority, but whose only powers would be to study the feasibility of having a by county authority which would assume responsibility for the canal. Clearly, every, nobody's anticipating that that canal won't continue in the ownership of the state. And anything that is proposed would only be with the blessing and sign off of the state, but as, 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 as Bill's described, we seem to have that, uh, at least preliminarily. So the only thing we'd be looking for your legislative body, and of course we've spoken with Mr. McClure uh, um, already, is to authorize the solicitor to help develop the structure of an authority. And there, I, I tell you the truth, I've never created an authority I'm not sure there would be some kind of compact that would be signed by both sets of county commissioners. And so they developed that. The only authority we want to see them have is to study the feasibility. Uh, then what is, of course, envisioned is that they're going to find feasibility, that they will figure out a set of, uh, of measures that between them would create enough income ongoing so that, so that there could be issuance of bonds and the generation of some, some money. Uh, that, but that's, nobody's committed to that. Mm -hmm. the, basically, the authority, the preliminary authority, comes back to the respective sets of commissioners. It's one step at a time. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and that's why we, because we, I will tell you, in other, those of us who've been around politics know that creating an authority can be a terrible idea. <laughs> that, you know, authorities uh, can be off running in all kinds of I, directions that last. I was about to say. Yeah, yeah. No, believe me, we're not. I, I'm, I guess not uh, nobody here is naive, but I'm the, I'm the guy who's, I'm, who's charged with being the Paul. So, yeah, we, we're not looking for you to take any kind of plunge like that. Your lawyer has to be completely confident that he can say to your government officials, yeah, it's okay to sign this, the scope of this, these guys yeah. can't make trouble, can't create, you know. Okay. You can, so far as I'm yeah. concerned, somebody figure out what, a, fees, what a, a length of time for the feasibility study was and just sunset. Mm -hmm. Just say this thing lasts for 12 sure. months or 18 months or maybe less. Okay. Uh, so, so yeah, that's the last thing we want. Okay. Uh, and in fact, the center city district, and this will be one of those political issues that will have to be schmoozed with a little bit, the center city district, which is a good model for what we want to do because of the, the diverse powers that, uh, that such a structure, the legal structure can have, but they're a little bit simpler because they've just got one mission. The canal does different things and plays different roles in different parts of our respective counties. So I think there's going to have to be some, some flexibility, and that's one of the, the neat things about this process. There, some, some powerful business people really sold this to the county government. I think back maybe under Ed Rendell, when Ed Rendell was governor, or was uh, mayor, and uh, they extracted a, a, an agreement that the only people who could be appointed to the authority were people who were nominated by either the authority or the, the you know, subgroup to sort of prevent somebody's brother-in-law who's a ward leader here or whatever from getting embedded there so we could hire people and, you know, all the rest of those evils that we know can come with authorities. So we're talking about something extremely narrow. Your lawyer ultimately has to sign off and say, yeah, you're not hooking yourself up or saddling the taxpayers with something that we don't want. Uh, and um, we take the step, you know, baby steps, and then we see where we're going. Okay. Um, uh, before we get into questions from them, did the administration want to, um, this uh, county exec? Yeah, the, the <laughs> judge, um, the, I think the judge touches on a good point. 
Uh, what I would want to do, just in fairness to Bucks County, would be uh, ideally to have a resolution from council uh, suggesting that we begin the process of negotiating the uh, the agreement to establish the the uh, the uh, initial authority, authority to determine yeah. whether we want to move forward. I'm I'm already very comfortable with getting all the way through to that process, but it would be, uh, I think, wise to have an understanding whether council thought that this is something we could do. I, we could do it now, and I could then come back to you with the finished plan, but if I didn't have some particular guidance, I'm not sure that that would be fair uh, to, the, to our potential partners to come back here and then you know, not be able to get uh, your, your assent to the ordinance that we would need to create the temporary authority. And it would be temporary. And I'd insist on it sunsetting so that we wouldn't, you know, there'd be a period of time that it would operate and then cease to exist before we then involved ourselves any further into the future. So that would be I think the there's very little, I, I think the point I'm trying to make, Mr. Chairman, is that there's very little downside to the, in, to the county uh, of Northampton uh, for the initial process here. And, mm -hmm. a, and a great deal of potential upside. Great. Okay? Yeah, thank you. Right. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for any of the folks that presented tonight? Mr. Dietz. I, I just had a, a, you may not know yet, but do you have a general cost of what you think the feasibility study would cost for the feasibility study? We have a range, and we also have some ideas about how to um, partnerships to get the money. So um, I think that the minimum we thought it would be 250 it would prob probably go more to, towards 450 um, and uh, it would include legal technical economic development at least um, there, there do you want to come up to the mic yeah sure that would be helpful I'm sorry <clears throat> appreciate that so I'll, I'll just start again um, the estimate the estimate right now is 250 to 450. Uh, it would include legal, technical, which is some engineering assessment, land, um, land assessment, and then economic development to take a look at the, the possibilities. Um, there have been ideas that are being act actively promoted, like uh, hydroelectric generation, mm. um, using different places in, along the canal. So those things all have to be shuffled out to see what, what their potentials are. Um, and then for funding, <clears throat> DCNR uh, can can fund planning, but it wouldn't we wouldn't be able to ask it to do it all by itself. Sure. But when you look at community and economic development, this is really a project that's built for them. It's it's really in their wheelhouse. So that's another source. Um, and then uh, the county the counties would be contributing the certain amount of staff time. We've met with Bucks County. Mm -hmm. We've asked them if they could contribute something. And then the legal time is all. Uh, eligible to be matched and so um, those are the ideas so far so you're not necessarily sorry. asking for dollars from the county we're not asking for for cash you're from asking the counties. for time uh, legal time. It, staff time and yes. the legal time right. they translate into values mm -hmm. um, we don't know what they are yet but those are the ideas so far right that's awesome. step one and, and then the second thing, you, you may not know yet, and I realize it'll probably come out of the feasibility studies, but do you know how many guests or, 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 or people tour, tour the canal or anything now? Or, or how much? Doug, okay, answer him. Would you answer Mr. Dietz and then okay. I want to. Okay, I wanna so um, do we know what the usership of the canal is? Yeah. Um, no, the DCNR, um, there's a lot of things that we would hope that they do, like uh, the trail counters on some of the trails now, are, they're starting to count uh, populations. But there is no records of that. Okay. Um, but the uh, and then the carrying yes. capacity um, that came up during the vis vision study. Um, certain places are underutilized. Certain places are heavily utilized. Um, but the idea, if you had an authority and you started to improve um, mm -hmm. the waterway, it would disperse the uses. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's really about all the time we have for you guys tonight because we have another we have another just, thing on the menu. Just just on very, the agenda. Just very quickly, so we don't sort of get the yeah. idea that the whole thing is a, a free lunch. Right. Eventually, if we were to enter into an authority to 
implement whatever yes, feasibility plan. So then the authority would be able to do things like go to market and bond, and the county potentially could be uh, its full faith and credit, if you will, could potentially be it could potentially but it's be worth implicated. It. It could be. We don't know. Yeah, yeah. That's, why, the we, that's why we study. should find out. So first we have to but it's, do the resolution. In the end, it, in the end, it is serious business. Okay. So would you need some form of a, um, a resolution? Uh, you need a resolution. I mean, I think you. I think move you could, to, I think you to make drafting a motion one tonight. A motion to draft yeah. a resolution. Well, no, I think you make a motion tonight, authorizing us to begin the process okay. of meeting and right. and getting we, the feasibility so done. I was told I have a one yes or no question from Mr. Hackman. A point of information. Does the Lehigh Canal empty in, does it mesh with the Delaware Canal? It, it, it does. Well, here's I mean, you don't have to get, I know everybody, we have a meeting the, coming the up. The Lehigh Canal is different than the Delaware Canal right. because it's sections of canal and sections of Oprah ri River navigation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where the Delaware Canal is strictly a canal. And the water from the Lehigh River Mm -hmm. enters just at the head, right there above the dam. Right. It enters, and, and um, that's what... But there's no contiguous Lehigh to... There is a towpath, but no yeah. waterway. Yeah. I just wondered. Now, thank you. Path. That's all. Although, look, I think the coal came down. There was one roof, you know, down oh, Lehigh yeah. until it crossed over the river. The Lehigh boats? Sportsman's Club uh, recovered a... Uh, coal carrier. Thank, thank you. I'm done. Thank, thank you, everyone. I, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt a resolution for this to move forward. I will second it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you. So moved. We, uh, with Mr. Chairman, if it pleases the committee, we can give the 2017 project updates at a later date. That would be wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a great idea. One other, one other piece. Of Thank you. One other small how, piece of business. How long will it take? Uh, I, I think longer than you want. That's, yeah. Longer I think you. Yeah. Want. I think we, have we only have five next. minutes. Yeah. I, yeah, I think, and I don't think that there's anything particularly pressing. It's not pressing. It's just. FYI. FYI. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, da Vinci wants to uh, understand, this is something for you to think about, wants to understand what protocol you want to adopt for being contacted about learning about the, the Da Vinci Science Center project. My own point of view is to contact you whenever they want to, right? Uh, individually or? That, that, that's how they did it yeah. before. They contacted well, us individually and asked us to go to lunch or something. You know I mean? And not saying they should take us to lunch, but no. they, they had asked everybody <laughs> to meet them somewhere. <laughs> yeah. You know? Uh, and we yeah, did that. Yeah, was really nice, right? Yeah. No, no, yeah. it was just. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, Ms. Erickson asked Ms. Smith for some guidance in that regard, and our guidance is going to be councils, you know, the nine We're right individual there. members who you can find. I Sarah, concur. Did, that's right? true. Did they, did they, they gave a presentation at Eastern City Council, didn't they? Last well, night. They, they did. Yes. And so, because they told us they weren't ready. They right? aren't. Well, well yeah, I, I, a, I, I think in fairness to them, they though, ready. they got the message from us that we didn't really want to hear it until <laughs> until they had the feasibility study in okay. hand. So yes. that meeting yeah. yesterday was what? Just a preliminary More trying marketing. to figure out More what the marketing. heck they're going to yeah. do kind of thing? It's unveiling the plan B, if you will, the Da Vinci Science. They, they already have Easton's commitment. Right. And we've already heard the pitch 17 times, so it hasn't changed. Right. It, well, you're the project. I, I just think you're wise to wait for the feasibility study. Yeah, that's all. That's all. And that's what I asked them to wait for the feasibility study. Bring a real plan to us this time so we can feel good on voting and giving them some kind of support. I think we're in the right place. That we want to do. I think we're in the right place. Okay. Adjourn. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Executive. Adjourn the um, Economic Development Committee meeting. Oh, good. So you're really setting that up, aren't you? <laughs> you're like, dude, the DC 21 project is going to cost us less money than your fish tank or your biodome. And it's completely free, and it's everybody. <laughs> good job.